This is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. I'd like to thank everybody who's taking the time out of your busy schedule today to attend this webinar presentation. As usual, if you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them into the chat box next to the video screen, and we'll try to address them during the presentation. Please make sure to complete the webinar attendance form. The webinar attendance form link is in the chat box, so go ahead and click on that link, enter your details, so that we could send you the CE credit for attending the webinar presentation. The CE credit will arrive via email and usually arrives within one week of the presentation. We are continuing today with the Everything Blue Sky Plan webinar series. The purpose of this series is to take a lot of the presentations, the webinar presentations that happened more in the first half of 2018 that were presented on a more clinical level and to bring them down to step-by-step -step protocols so that you could implement them in your practice, take advantage of the presentations and the techniques that are being taught and use them to help you, your practice, and of course, raise the level of treatment for your patients. Today's topic, we're gonna be discussing the new Blue Sky Plan Denture Module. Today's presentation is going to be co-hosted by myself and Dr. Raymond Rofi. He has joined the Blue Sky Bio team in early 2018, and he is definitely our CAD CAM expert and provides CAD CAM support to clinicians and laboratories. The denture module is definitely something that can help you. It's something that you can integrate and start using in your practice. Today's presentation is the ninth presentation of the webinar series. We've covered a variety of topics ranging from different ways of fabricating surgical guides for edentulous arches, using the wizard. We've covered the ortho module. We've covered biobigbox.com, which is Blue Sky Bio's HIPAA compliant file transfer and backup system. And today we're gonna to be discussing the new denture module. Recordings for, the, for these webinar presentations and for the more clinically oriented presentations that took place in the first half of 2018 can be accessed via blueskyplan.com and they're available via YouTube as well. The Denture module, we're happy to announce, has free exports from the Denture module at least until the end of November. So any cases that you're doing in the Denture module can be designed, fabricated, and exported at no cost from the Blue Sky Plan software. If you've missed past presentations, then you could definitely watch the recordings and get up to speed. The new version of Blue Sky Plan is on our website. It's for version 437. And the main significant upgrade that we've done to the software for this version is a full integration of the denture module. If you want to confirm that you're using the correct version of the software, the most recent version of the software, just go to help about and check that you have version 437 installed on your computer. If you don't, then go ahead and download it from our website. You could download it on top of the software version you already have installed. No need for a new license. If you have exports, they'll be automatically carried over to the new installation. We've also created a denture module page on the Blue Sky Plan website. You can notice the URL, blueskyplan.com forward slash dentures. There we have a lot of different videos, information about denture fabrication, materials. Uh, we have the download sample case, which is very important. The case that's being presented today is available for download from this page. So you could go ahead after the webinar presentation, download the same data set that's being presented in today's presentation and follow along for the webinar recording and try it out on your own computer. Okay, without uh, further ado, I'd like to pass this over to Raymond to go ahead and present the process flow for denture fabrication in the Blue Sky Plan software. Okay, thank you, Michael. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Dr. Emu Roti again, and I'll be happy to today give you a demonstration on what basically is the software functionality uh, to make uh, the dentures. Okay, so first of all, we will start opening the software. 
okay? And let me just give you a brief introduction on how does this software works. Okay, basically it has uh, a step sequence that they will be first the data acquisition, which now will be the step that we're doing is where we merge all the information, the models, and we orient them into the software in order to be logical and easy way to create our dentures. So for merging our models, the easiest way that I find is when we open basically our folders and we just select our models. After that, we can select all of them together and we can drag and drop them into the Blue Sky, the Blue Sky Plan software. And as well, as you all know, we can also click File, New Project, STL File Only, and it will prompt us to import, sorry for that, it will prompt us to import our cases as well. We can select with Shift, can select all of them, click OK, and they will be imported into the, the plan. OK, so now, basically, as we see, we have all the models into Blue Sky Plan. And we want to orient them. If you see on the lower left area, we have the face of our patient, and they are not oriented, right? So we can orient them here on the model manipulation panel. We can go always to panels, model manipulation, and then we will select one of the models that we have. In this case, I'm going to select the total jaw, which is the bite rims. And I am going to basically just model position manually. I'm going to left click on that. I am going to click on the top arrow of the face of the patient, and then I am going to use the widget. The widget is this circular um, widget that we have, and we could just rotate our model in order for it to be completely aligned. We could, with our left click and drag, we could always drag our uh, screen to have a good positioning. We have a reference. If you see the midline here, we can we want to have that as aligned as possible with the face of our patient. After we're done with that, we click again the button of adjust model position manually. We go with our lower jaw. We click then in alignment auto, then align to model. We make sure that we do not have check the align user points. Um, checkbox and then we select to align it to the total jaw which is the model that we already aligned to okay now we click ok and it will align as you see and then we'll select the blue model which is the upper jaw again auto and align to model make sure that we don't have the checkbox mark and align it to the same uh green model we all, we always want to align to the same model that we started with Select OK. So now we have a perfect alignment on our model. OK. After this, we're going to change to the denture module. So we could go to the top right side on our screen and we can click in this button where it says denture module. And we could we'll go there. The denture module is uh, slightly different than the regular the, the regular Blue Sky Plan module. It has a black back screen, and it will have less options on the panels. We'll have only the, the necessary to work. We have the denture panel, which will give us the options for the steps, and we have the teeth surfaces panel, which give us the surfaces options. In the surfaces options, of course, we'll have the models, okay, and 
yeah. Um, okay, here I will explain the data set that I imported as the upper jaw, the lower jaw. Let me just click out. I'll, I'll explain you what I imported. So basically, I imported the lower jaw model. This is an STL model of lower jaw. Then I imported the upper jaw model aligned in occlusion with the bite rims. Okay, and the bite rim registration, which all this could be uh, gathered from our uh, Shining 3D intro external scanner or intro scanner, whichever you have. And uh, after we have all this data, we will be able aligned. That's the most important. After we have all these data aligned, we'll be able to start <clears throat> creating our denture. Sorry. So we have also in the teeth surfaces, the filters uh, functioning. The filters functioning, if you see, we have a lot of checkboxes which says maxillary. This is for all the maxillary surfaces that we have. Mandibular is for all the mandibulary data set that we have, let's say. And then we have the teeth and crown boxes. When we have the teeth, I'll, I'll show it to you as well as the models. Dentures will have the denture base as well as uh, the reduced denture and uh, and the denture uh, reduced copying, as well as the reduced teeth, which will be a new data set of teeth that will be created specifically to, um, to be able, when we print our teeth, to be easily glued into the denture base. I will be explaining this further on when we have uh, our denture already done. Okay, so for now we're going to we're going to go to the denture panel and we're basically left clicking on the add tooth button which is on the upper bar options. It has the the teeth and the plus sign button and then we'll have it will display a window with all our geometry or teeth libraries. We have virtual teeth sets and physical teeth sets. The virtual teeth sets we have with uh, very, actually very beautiful anatomies. We have the Mitch first and the Dave Beach libraries. Um, I will just explain very briefly what are these. The Mitch Pontic library, there's a like ideal occlusion library. We have as well the flat anatomy library, which are uh, flat anatomies for easily positioned occlusion. As well, we have the Dave Beach, which has a longer roots root like uh, teeth available as well we have the physical teeth sets okay sorry so the virtual teeth sets these teeth sets are exportable as well as are editable and scalable on on size and you can choose between small medium and large of every one of the libraries as well in the in the teeth said you can always click with your mouse button and it will turn off red then you shift click and you can shift and you can select the teeth individually or you could go to the utilities and select basically all maxillary teeth all mandibular teeth or select all teeth for the whole uh, teeth set okay yeah. Kind of and I want to explain a little bit more regarding the different process flows that the denture sure. supports. Uh, the user is able to fabricate a denture that can be exported together with all the teeth, and everything can be exported as STL files, either separate STLs or as a single STL file, and that could be sent for printing. We also have the option to fabricate a denture base for physical teeth sets where the teeth will be purchased and inserted into the denture base. The denture base will be fabricated with the teeth subtracted out with indentations in place to insert those physical teeth sets. And we separated the process flows to ensure that there isn't any problems by distributing the STL files for the companies that are manufacturing the physical teeth. And of course, the idea being that they'll be purchased and inserted into the denture module. So there's no concern regarding the, the information 
or data of these companies being distributed. So the virtual teeth set has the teeth that could be exported and the physical teeth set will fabricate the denture base without the export of the teeth so that the physical teeth can be inserted afterwards. That's right. Okay, yeah, as, just as Michael said, we, uh, on the virtual teeth, they are all editable and we can just print them or fabricate them. Um, and on the physical teeth set, these are non-exportable. They have to be bought on Blue Sky Bio. And we have, for now, three libraries, all of them. Um, they have their anterior, lower, and upper, and posterior uh, teeth sets. And we have basically the number T5, which is the small library, the T7, which will be the medium library, and which will be the T11, which will be the large teeth library. So you could have those put on your, on your data set. Okay. Yeah. Library. So you could have those. Sure. Okay. Now uh, we'll select for this case the virtual teeth set. Okay. And I will select the Mitch first public library. I will left click on my central, on my right central uh, maxillary incisor. That will be my anchor tooth. Okay. So every time that I right click and it turns red, that will be the place where when I am exporting all my teeth, it will anchor the teeth chain in there. Let me show you how. So I selected all teeth, and then I will select the, the button where it says add selected teeth as a teeth chain. After this, I will just zoom in. I will select where it's my library. This will be my anchor. And I will shift and left click with my mouse button the computer will start thinking and it will process the information to actually place my library in. Okay, so next thing that I am going to do is I will right click on my bite rim um, model and I will toggle the transparency on this. This is a very good functionality of the software which will allow me to basically navigate through the library with seeing through it. And I will have the reference of the bite rim so I can basically position very good my teeth. So I am using now the scaling feature, the scaling button here, where it will allow me to position my teeth on the size, on the desired size, and then now appeared a widget. This widget, I am moving the entire teeth chain, okay, for both maxillary and mandibular anatomy. So I will take in consideration now the bite rim's midline, which is positioned right here. It's a midline on the patient. That's why it's very useful here. So I will position my teeth. Let me position it right on the middle of the ridges. And now I really don't need any more the, the bite rim. So I will go to the, I will just unclick the entire teeth chain, go to the teeth surfaces. And I will, as you see now, we have all the surfaces toggled in. They're too much. So I will just toggle in the models and I will check out the visibility of the total jaw or the bite rings. So now that we have, again, our teeth, we will move the entire teeth chain. And we are positioning it ideally. I'll just scale it nicer. That'll be good. Okay. After we position, we generally positioned it. Now, uh, next step for me will be basically do the entire teeth chain. Okay. So I will show my teeth chain. This teeth chain will allow me to move my teeth 
with a green node above every tooth. This will allow me to move them in a basic, in a general position. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the nodes where I selected my anchoring positioning, which will be first my my central incisors. After I have all this clicked, then I will click shift and I will basically rotate. I will accommodate my my teeth. If you saw now, I just moved one quadrant of my teeth. I will just press now, edit, undo, and I have the possibility as well to choose and keep opposing arch in occlusion always and to move opposing tooth. This means that when I move my teeth to position in the center of the ridge, it will move in uh, the lower and the upper teeth. Okay, so now I will just move everything in order to have good alignment and a good positioning. This will be make a very easy uh, teeth alignment. That's very good. We can always with shift. Okay, so now uh, once that we have the tooth uh, in correct positioning, we'll always lock those teeth in and we can just go uh, posteriorly and select the teeth that we want to position better. Actually, this side was beautiful. Now, all these teeth are locked in. For example, now on our patient's right side, I will have to move them a little bit. So if I press shift, I will move them as a block. And if I press control and drag them, I will be able to move them without controlling the, the rotation of the teeth. If I press Alt and click on one of the teeth, a widget will appear. Remember that the widget are always the blue is the X axis, the Y is the, the, the green is a Y axis, and then the Z is a red axis. So we'll be able to rotate and accommodate our uh, teeth set here. I'll basically I'll basically accommodate the rotation of these teeth now. And like that. Now, let me just put this on the center. Question I'll, in, the yeah, software yeah. can the crossbite setup, anterior, posterior, both. Right. Are you so, well, now I really think that it's fine, this alignment. Okay, think that it's good. Once that we're satisfied with this alignment, then what we're going to do is we're going to create the, the denture set, okay? So till now we have now acquired all the data set, which was the models. Now second step was the teeth alignment. Okay, now that we're happy with the teeth, with the teeth alignment, we can start creating our dentures, denture bases. That will be the step number three. For this, I will hide my mandibular, my mandible teeth chain. I will select my upper jaw in the denture. I'll select as maxilla, and I will select the button as create denture. This will take me to the next step, which will be uh, the undercut, the under to block the undercuts. For this step, I am going to right click on the lower jaw now and toggle visibility will make it disappear. Then I will now have this pink widget which will give me the insertion access for my undercuts, which I really want to allow undercuts to be there. 
if I go, if I slide the bar where it says undercut up to, if I slide the bar to none to zero, this will allow basically all the undercuts, which is good for us in this venture because we want it to snap in. And we could go up to five uh, millimeters undercuts, which we basically don't want this now for our dentures. So I am going to basically leave this in a point 10. And we can rotate our model and select the insert direction from view button, which will give us a very nice insertion axis for our models. Okay. So basically after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click next. And now the software will prompt me to save the, the work. The case, I am going to call this as venture full eventualos case and I will just click OK. We have always to be very organized on the folders so we can find easily what are we doing and what are we looking for. OK. So now created a I will, I'm sorry, I, I missed this tab, which is defined the, the posterior palatal seal. On the posterior palatal seal, I will click shift and I will clip on the hamular notches. If I have teeth, like in this case, I have teeth that are going uh, posterior to where I want the denture, I can easily toggle the visibility and then just cancel them. Now I will shift and click on the hamular notches for our uh, posterior parallel seal, which will give us the nice shaped cupid bow for our posterior teeth. And we have now our, uh, in our undercuts, we have now four options where we can modify basically the curve on our uh, palatal seal or post dam, we will be able to create to modify the steepness or flatness of our central curve and the to be able to steepness or flatness of our lateral curves, as well as the arrangement of the curves towards the nodes. Okay, so for this case, I think that we're going to do this. And we are now selecting as well the thickness as two millimeters. I think that this is a very good thickness and it will modify my model. It will create a little uh, notch in the posterior palatal seal. And now it's going to show us our model. creating now the undercuts for our uh, model. Now, as you see, we have new undercuts in our posterior parallel part of the model. And now we are in our second uh, venture-based step where we are creating the offset. Okay, the offset, I want it very, very close to none. I will leave it on, on 0.05. Then the thickness of my denture by default is it's three millimeters, which I think is great. I will define as three millimeters and I'll just click next. I will just, sorry, before clicking next, you have to select the curve that will define our denture. 
outline. Okay, for this, you have to click Shift and you will click your left mouse button in order to have your limits. You will limit your flanges in the fornix of your models. After you are in your last point, you can just shift and left click it and uh, make it one or just join it to the first point. We have now a line between each node, which if we click on the line, we can create new nodes, which will be very useful for us to create a nice even line. We can now set up our, our freedom. After we have all, after we think it's okay, then now we can, now we can go and click next. Okay, now what it's doing is creating our denture base. It's creating now the, the offset that we said that it was 0 0.05 that will be very, very close to the tissue. We really don't want any space there because we want our denture to just snap in, fit very tight. And now, the, second, the third step will be the gingival height, which will be basically the vertical height, the vertical height of the gum which we can say that it's uh, on the area, on the interproximal areas, ones that we set it up with the widget. We can just set it up like rotating our plane. And now we will, when we're satisfied, we just click next. And it will take us now to our horizontal or uh, width, gingival width, which is now the fourth step. And the fourth step, what we're going to do is we're going to click Shift and our left mouse button to create the area where we want to bulge it up more. It will be the same process as before where we want to actually just create this area on palatal. I like to take them very close to the teeth. After this, on the last point, we'll just shift, click on the node. When it turns yellow, we'll just join it to the first point and it will make our line as one, okay? Then after this, we'll be able to edit the the denture outline. I like to make it just as one. Fine. And now what we're going to do is we are going to, after we're happy with this, we could just create next, click next. This will now create the gingiva. This will now bulge the gingiva like horizontally. It will budget there. And after this step, we will be able to deform and actually give our personal customization to our denture. Which is actually my favorite part of the process where you can really spend the most of the time here festooning and making all the gingival anatomy there, softening, 
and giving everything that you would like. I personally like to be as quick as possible on these processes and have after the fabrication of my of my restorations, I like to basically give my personal touch. And uh, so I like to give them like 90% and then I finish my 10% by hand. So making it as natural as possible, which that will be after the fabrication process, it will come our finishing process, which we'll be happy to, to explain today. Okay. So now it's creating the, the gingiva. To summarize the process flow, what we've been discussing, you know, first we've aligned and acquired the data sets and aligned the models. We then place the teeth. We have full flexibility within the software to move the teeth as a complete data set or individually to put the teeth in any location, any setup we desire. And one of the great things about the denture module with Blue Sky Plan is that we have the teeth already pre-set up. So you don't have to go creating the initial setup. You just take what we have as the pre-set up and you could fine tune it and customize it to match up to the patient's reach. So those two steps are the first steps that we have in order to get ready for the denture fabrication process. We need to have the models and the teeth in the correct positioning. Once we do have that, then we start running through the process of creating the denture. We remove the undercuts. We created the palatal seal when, where it's relevant. Um, we defined the gingiva buildup both in terms of the height and in terms of the width. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, seems like we have a court here with the software. Um, we're going to go ahead and edit the gingiva and fine tune the way that it looks and the look and feel of the denture. Yeah, why don't you just go ahead and okay. find the gingiva buildup again? To that. Yeah, I'm going to do the build up again now. Actually, I really like it now. Okay. Now we're clicking on next and we are waiting for the software to create the gingiva. And what we're going to see is that the denture module is going to create three different surfaces for us for the denture base. We're going to have a denture base. We're going to have the denture base with uh, without the teeth and without any indentations or impressions. We're going to have another surface of the denture base that has the indentations and impressions if you want to place the physical teeth or the printed teeth into it. And we'll have the possibility of creating a reduction coping as well, where you, you could use that to reduce physical or printed teeth that interfere with, uh, with the model base or the patient's anatomy. Okay, now it's creating the, the gingiva. It will take a while. Now it's actually taking more than it regularly does. So. Okay, let's wait. OK, 
Okay, now what I'm seeing actually now that I just don't like is that the yeah the the flanges are way too away from my denture my denture flanges so what I'm going to do is and actually this is a good thing that happened because now we can see what we don't want and I will just create again the basically will be the outline of the denture normally this will not delay us that uh, that much okay so I will just create everything the, the denture outline again After I have that, try to bring this the more. Okay. Again, the flanges and all over the frame. Okay. Think that the Fornix was too, the flange were too out. So now I will just define the height and the width of the gum again. Okay. And now we'll create the vertical. Okay, we'll click next. Gingiva height, and now we're taking to the gingiva width again. The build up area. One, I like to put the points one every two. Join them. Okay, now let's see if this it's just faster now. And we'll see. Okay, so now I have it. This is regularly the time that it should take, not as before. So now um, what I'm going to do is we have now the shaping of the gingiva. And the way that we, I will go step by step so you can actually, so you can see what is this functionality of. So we will click and select it until it's blue, the add remove button. Okay, we have as well the tool size and the tool strength with we, where we can actually uh, modify the size here in the scroll bar and the strength here in the scroll bar. Or we could select with shift button and then the mouse will, the shift button mouse will, will, will change the tool size, which is a, a very good hotkey that we have. And with control button and uh, control key and uh, wheel and the mouse wheel will allow us to control the strength of our buttons. 
So now I'm going to add remove and I will go right onto the flanges but I think that they are way bulky. And when I press control, I will subtract. When I click shift, I will add. Okay, as you see, we're creating a bump when I click, click shift. And when I click control, I am subtracting material here and creating a negative. You know, I'm subtracting wax here, basically. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create all the fast tuning and all the, the, anat the extra anatomy that I would like. So now, for example, the first, the first thing that I would like to do is smooth the areas that I just uh, modified. Okay, this will be so uh, maintaining the shift button, and then with my mouth, with my left mouse button, I am keep just pressing it until I smooth the areas that I have there. Now, next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to show you guys what is a local deform. The local deform button, which is one of my favorites, the local deform button is basically to, to deform in the same spot that I have this arrow. I could pull out and I could create uh, bulges. So, for example, if I would like to create the canine eminence, I'll be able to do that. So we can always exaggerate a little when we are doing these eminences because when you print them, actually, believe it or not, you can see it more exaggerated here on the software than you can see them once that they are printed. So now we're going here on the posterior area. If you didn't like one thing that you did, like for example, what I do right now, you can always go to edit, undo, or click Control and Shift and Z, and it will take us to the very last step where we actually want that. Now we're adding your material to cover all our molars. And okay, once that we are happy with this, we can as well if we would like to move our entire teeth chain for example i am watching now that even though now i am completely aligned with my face i am misaligned a little bit with my with my models so i could go again to the teeth surfaces and check the midline okay Now that we're happy again with this. We can as well select the teeth chain if we want to change it or we can just, I'm just going to finish with this. I'm just going to uh, smooth it. I'm going to change the size. Even though now a very important thing here is even though that I am trying to modify the margin, it will not happen. It will not go through the margin. That's a very important feature that this software has. Um, if I would like to add or remove from here, I am now removing. I will never move from the margin. Okay. Again, as I say, I always like to finish my restorations like 90% and then finish it by hand which will give it for me quicker and more precise. If I, by any chance, violating the minimum, the minimum uh, height or the minimum contour areas, we will see these red spots that we have to fix. And once that we added material, we're now happy with this. And we can just finish the area. After we smooth it, we can start with our fist tuning. Here we can create the marginal the marginal uh, gum here, just surrounding the, the teeth. Again, we can be very uh, 
exaggerated because these are very difficult for the printer to, well, these are not difficult. The thing is that you can actually see more what you do now here on the software than uh, what actually you look when they are printed. Okay, have it now to remove this little area that is coming out. Okay. We can create with control and add. We could create as well the difference. Between the roots. And remember that we're going to feel most of the time we're going to feel this with uh, layered resin. To give uh, a very nice finishing. Okay. Maybe the last smooth here over here. Good. Good. Now I will just move this and just finish it for the purpose of the webinar. We can really, as you see, we can really uh, be a lot of time here festooning and doing everything. And we can, we always have to remove the the red areas with the smooth tool. We just just stretch out the material there a bit. Uh, the right, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, when the when you smooth it out, it will give a better, it will give a good uh, outline. Okay, now we just straight it out, and we're just now smoothing everywhere. So we can now go to the next step. Okay, and now let's say we're happy with this, and we'll just click next. Okay, here it says we have red areas. It will not allow us to go further if we have, if we still have this red area. So please be sure always to remove those from the from the surface. As these basically what they are is that they are inverted triangles in the mesh, which will uh, create errors on the STL denture base. So the software will prevent us from that. Good. Now I think that we're ready and we'll just go next. Well, after we're done with this, we are selecting now our teeth offset, which I really want uh, very low. I will just leave it at 10. The offset is basically the space will be between the teeth and the and the denture base. And now the minimum denture thickness, I want it to be at least 0.6. That is why uh, where I actually feel comfortable when we have 
the printed or mailed material, especially when they are printed, when they are mailed, we need at least 0.6, then we will, if we would have, okay, just there is one very important thing. We have the option here on the software to generate a tooth reduction coping. Tooth reduction coping is when we have the, the, but the, basically the teeth, the physical teeth that we can buy, we generate, the software will generate a denture base with holes where we can place the teeth there and we can grind them out with a lab uh, bore. So after that, we can glue them into the denture base and they will fit perfectly. Okay, now uh, well, I will say to generate the tooth reduction coffin just for the webinar sex. And I can always look in the inside of the denture in order for us to watch all the teeth that are impinging on the soft tissue. These teeth that are impinging basically are the ones that will be, um, the reduction copying will be having them, the holes, and then we'll be able to grind them out. Okay, now we'll finalize this. And we will be finishing. Now, what is doing the software is basically uh, joining everything that we said within these six steps, which was doing the undercuts and also is creating a denture base without any holes, is creating a denture base with sockets where uh, our teeth will be able to, to be glued in and is creating, generating a reduction copying denture base, sorry, that will uh, allow us to place the teeth, as I said, and grinding uh, them with a lab uh, bore and basically finishing our workflow, okay? Now, the very next step that we have, it will be regularly will be to create the lower denture. Now for the time, I will go straight to, well, if it's okay with you, Michael, and with everybody of you that you are listening, that you're watching the webinar, I'm going to, mer to go directly to the export phase, which is a very important part of the workflow. And well, I will show you guys how to export it, then how to print it, and just uh, some finishing tips. Just to clarify, Michael, is there anything else? Yeah, tell me. The software is doing now, it intersects with the model, is being reduced by the software. And I'm hearing an echo. Um, it's being reduced by the software. So the software is going to generate two versions of each of those teeth, one that's reduced and then one that's not reduced. So in situations where you have the reduced tooth, what you're gonna be exporting if you're creating a printed denture is you're gonna be exporting the reduced teeth in those situations together with the denture base. And that will give you the complete one piece STL file for printing if that's what you wanna be doing. Right. Okay, so now it's almost finishing and I will show you all the all the surfaces that are generating um, one of the greatest things that I like on the software is that the teeth that you are watching right now on the on the screen are the surfaces that are selected on the teeth surfaces panel okay so let me talk about the filters. I already did it on the beginning of the webinar. Now I'll talk in very, very uh, quick. So I am going to unselect the mandibular surfaces. I'm just going to select the maxillary and I am going to just select now the models for saying these are my maxillary models. These yellow is the undercut models which will be basically the blocking all the undercuts, then I will have as well, if I on toggle on select the models and I select the teeth and crown, these will be all the teeth and crown that we have for the upper. 
Okay, and uh, we have, if you see, we have here basically all the teeth and the crowns uh, generated by the software. Okay, if we want to look at the reduced teeth, the reduced teeth, we will have always an R, lower cap R, before the name of the teeth, and this will be the teeth that the software automatically reduced. If you remember uh, last view, the last time that I view, that I made this view, which is, was the inside of the denture, there were a lot of teeth that were impinging on the soft tissue. Now they're gone. Why? Because the software already made the already made the reductions in that area. And now what we are going to do basically, okay, as well, I want to point at this on the dentures. We have three denture base models. Okay, the first one will be basically the denture base. Another one will be the the denture base uh, the denture base with the reduction copying, and the other one will be the denture base without the sockets. Okay, now that we have all these uh, surfaces in. We can uh, finally start the export uh, process. Michael, is there something that you would like to say now? Yeah, the software automatically, when it, when it fabricates a denture, sets up on the screen the denture base together with the reduced teeth in the, in the relevant situation, or if there's no reduced tooth for that particular tooth, then the non-reduced teeth. So you don't have to go switching on and off different surfaces. If you want to export those files, it's all set up on the screen. And when you go to File, Export, and those are the files you're automatically going to be exporting. For whatever reason you want to change and export different surfaces, then you could toggle the visibility on and off using the visible check marks. And then when you go to File, Export, then those surfaces are going to be the, one, the ones that are active and the ones that are going to, going to be exporting. Right. So now we're going to export data, just as Michael said, and the only surfaces that will be present in there will be the surfaces that were on the screen. Okay. So for example, now we're, ha we're having only the max clarity. For now, we're having the three uh, denture bases. We are just on selecting the max clarity undercut model, which we don't need um, as well we will unselect the denture base itself because we only want the final okay the denture fin the fin will mean that it has the sockets for the teeth to be glued in cop or cop will be the the denture base that will have the holes for our teeth to be placed in and and grinded out on the gingival excess and then on the tooth on the virtual teeth area we'll have there only on the export selection will have only the the teeth that will be uh, selected for exporting okay so in this case we only had two the right maxillary second premolar and, and first premolar and all of the rest of the teeth they were uh, reduced for placing them good okay and now I will unselect I will unselect the 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 denture cop and fin okay i will select the denture base and i will explain one very important thing for for this software uh finally we got it which it was uh, before in in blue sky bio when we exported we exported everything as one stl all in one uh, file and now we have the option to actually separate them, separate all the files in the same folder if you check this uh, checkbox. Okay, so we have now the export separated files to a folder option as selected, and we will click export the case again into the folder that we selected as the one for our case now you're going to now you're exporting the separate files or they could all be exported together into a single file 
if they're going to be printed as one piece for monolithic denture. Right. So what Michael is saying is we would like to select a to print or to fabricate a monolithic restoration. What we do is we go export data again. We will just select one uh, one denture base basically it could be the denture base either or the final okay and if we select only the teeth now we unselect the export separated file to the folder again we'll go to export here in the case we will select it as monolithic denture save it Okay, now that we have all this done, we I am going to basically go to the printing software. I'll go to Rayware. If you have the Moonray or the Preform, you have Formlabs or the Photon or whoever is the printer manufacturer that you have, you go to the software, open it. Once that is open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click folder. I'm going to select the monolithic denture. Okay. And I am going to export it to my printer program. If you see, we have here the, the finalized, the final denture. Look at the detail that it has is a very, very good detail with this. I could just print it and finish it. Uh, in very quick okay well now what i'm going to do is i'm going to tilt it just a bit and place it on the middle of the of the printer platform of the printing platform and now i am going to generate the support the supports that i like with these are light intensity and medium strength. These supports will be very, very easy to remove after are printed. There are many printers out there. You guys should, uh, will know about that. We could either print it this way and we can remove them. We remove all the supports or we could actually print it as well on the gingival surface. Tilt it a little bit more and just generate the supports. That is actually up to anyone where is the places that you are going to reduce. Okay. If I am not touching a lot on the dent on the anatomy, I will I will place it on the gingival surface. Since I am really uh, fixing the the anatomy and I don't want the inside of the denture uh, touch, I will just generate the supports on the outside okay so after all this we will select our resin in this time i would select the crown and bridge in 50 microns and hands and uh it will take as you can see three hours to print it will take 27 milliliters of material which is a very acceptable amount and yeah that's that's it. If we have this support, which I really don't, I really dislike, I could just edit them. And try to always have a nice, even so, uh, surface. Okay. Then we can go to print, and we are basically done with uh, fabricating uh, with the fabrication process. Um, we could go now and create the lower denture, the max, the mandibular denture. But I think that now we have run out of time. And uh, well, is there anything else, Michael, that you would like? Or let me just talk about the finishing process. The finishing process will be a the process where you will, after printing or milling, you will just have the 
grind it down with the uh, with the with a board, and you will add layers of gum composite in there. Uh, previously, you will add some bonding material, and you will you will then add some some characterization in there. And really, you could have high end dentures with this uh, with this software. Okay. So, is there anything else, Michael? Yeah, just a few comments uh, to re to yeah. re mention. So the process flow that we the process flow that we just went through obviously was for one jaw. To go ahead and, and do the second jaw, we already have the models imported, we already have them aligned, we already have the teeth placed. It's just a matter of switching back to the denture panel as uh, Raymond is showing now on the screen, selecting the relevant surface, selecting the radio button for the relevant jaw, and click create denture. The software will take you through that six step process. Here you're gonna press plan opposing arch. Okay, you're not going to restart the case. You're going to plan the closing arch. The software will take you through the six-step process for the insertion angle, for the to define the gingiva base, the height, the width, and take you through that process flow, which will, of course, be much shorter because we already have the models imported and we already have the teeth set up. So we could go ahead and do that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, right now, until at least the end of November, the exports from the denture module are free. There's no charge. Um, what will be happening probably after that in the longer term, there will be uh, one export credit fee for each denture, for each jaw. So the cost of manufacturing a denture will be the export credit, which ranges between $11 and $21, the printing material, and of course, if you're purchasing the teeth, then, then uh, purchasing the teeth. I also want to bring up um, the web address that I mentioned earlier for blueskyplan.com dentures. Be able to see my screen. And what we have here is the sample data set that was used in the webinar presentation. We have some training courses and videos and today's presentation will be added to there as well. What we have is information regarding the resin uh, for the Moonray printer. Uh, we have links to order the resin. We have links to the denture teeth. We have information regarding our desktop scanner. And here, responding to some questions that came in, you have the gingiva shades. So you could print the entire denture with one material, and then you could use the different shades to change the coloring. We also have information regarding recommended burrs for the reduction coping. And again, we have that possibility of creating the reduction coping at the end of the process flow, where you could insert the teeth into the reduction coping, the part that should be reduced will protrude to the other side and can be reduced using the burrs. Um, so, okay, so I think that pretty much wraps things up and addresses the questions that came in. The resin information is could be found here on the on the on the web page, the next dent denture base material is the recommended resin. Uh, if you haven't yet entered your contact information, your details into the webinar attendance form, then please go ahead and do that. So we could go ahead and send you the CE credit, and that will again be via email. Uh, just to point out and direct you to resources for more as, for more help, we have the blueskyplan.com website. That has a lot of different, very valuable educational information. So again, if we're looking at the website, we click on education. So here we have training courses and there are shortcuts here to the different modules. We have links to step-by-step -step process flows that often include uh, cases that you could download and practice on. We have information regarding live upcoming courses, training courses being offered, webinars, upcoming webinars, and access to all of the past recorded webinars, uh, knowledge base, which is some articles written in response to questions, and of course, how to contact support. Um, and finally, we have the Facebook group. I'm just gonna bring that up very quickly. 
The Facebook group is a fantastic resource and we encourage people to post cases and ask questions and to share information. There are a lot of clinicians that are very gen generous with their time there with a lot of experience that will comment and leave feedback or uh, you could post questions and the Blue Sky Bio team of course also monitors the group. So if you have a support question or technical issue, then the Facebook group is a great place to ask questions, get the help you need from both the Blue Sky Plan team, Blue Sky Bio team and other clinicians. At this point okay. of time, I'd like to thank everybody for attending the webinar presentation. Raymond, I'd like to thank you for giving the webinar presentation. Uh, contact information for Blue Sky Plan is on the screen. You could go ahead and contact us if you have a phone via email. And of course, the Facebook group is the primary recommended avenue for contacting us and getting your issues resolved. Um, Is there any questions or? Well, we, I think we've addressed most of the questions that came in. Again, if you're not using the latest version of the software, 437, then go to our website and go ahead and download and install that to make sure uh, you are using the latest version of the software. Okay, thank you very much. I hope to see you all at the next uh, presentation. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.